How I Got DSD Working on My Desktop Computer by Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446. So the other day I put up a little video showing how I got uh, DMR decoding working on this desktop computer here, which is my main desktop in the lounge, although I am planning on moving that into the shack at some point. Uh, when that will be, I don't know yet. Um, so, I'm not sure if you can hear it, because obviously I'm using this microphone you can see in front of me. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear that. Drop that down a bit. Uh, so that's uh, being decoded from my jumbo spot in the shack. And uh, that's uh, connected to the hub net. Um, I do have a DMR radio behind me, but that is actually turned off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you more or less how this was done. It might go over the heads of some people because obviously it does involve compiling programs on, on Linux. And if you're not familiar with doing that, it can be a bit complicated. Although if you've done anything on the Raspberry Pi, you m might know where we're going here because it's v it's pretty much the same operating system. I'm not sure this would work on a Raspberry Pi because I've not actually tried it. So that might be something worth trying if I can get hold of a Raspberry Pi 4 at some point. So I might try that at some point in the future and uh, if that works I'll pop a video of that up as well if I do that in the future. So without further ado I'm going to go over to the computer and I'm going to show you how it's done. It'll all be up on the screen for you, so I don't have to put a camera on the screen or anything. Uh, I'll have to obviously turn this off first in order to, to show you that, so I'll go and do that now. Okay, so to get DSD, you'd need to go onto the GitHub page for it. If you click on code, you'll get a drop drop down box here for, for, for cloning it. So you'd use you'd use this address here to do that. So and I've got the command already in a terminal window, and that's the command you would use. I'll probably put this in the in the dis description below. You do need some other things as well for this to work. So it plus plus and mbe lib, and there's a couple of other things as well which I shall just bring up on the screen. There's installation instructions on the GitHub page for DSD. So if you follow them, you should be okay. So you need CMake. That should be available in your distributions package package manager. MBE lib, which is by the author of DSD. Sound file, which should be in the package manager. IT++, which you can get from SourceForge, which I'll show you in a moment. And port audio, which, although it says optional, you get them... Uh, that from the package manager so I think it should actually be installed but do check on your system first best way to do that is um, uh, look in the package manager if you've got um, uh, a graphical user interface to it so saves you um, uh, typing in commands so this is uh, IT++ you can just download it from here or what you can do I do actually have this open in a terminal as well. It's one of these terminal tabs. I believe it is the middle one. That's the command used there. That's actually from the instructions as um, uh, seen for installing DSD. And then once you've installed that, uh, you should be able to install MBE lib, which you need to install before DSD. So otherwise, I think it spits out errors if you if you do that. If you do DSD first. So it's all on it's all on the um, uh, GitHub page for for installation. It's that one. Um, so it should be at the bottom how you would do it from from source. So like I said, just git clone and then the address of the repository, which I've showed you already. Then you go into the DSD directory that it that's created, you make a build directory, you go into the build directory, 
Then you do CMake to the directory below, which is what the two full stops are for. Then make and then super user do sudo make install. Sudo gives you root, but you don't log in as root, you're still logged in as yourself. So you can do things as root, logged in as yourself, such as run the package manager or things like that, or install software. The MBE lib installation is very similar. You would just uh, change your uh, the URL of the Git repository to the one for MBE lib. It's the same process. So you make the build directory, you go into the build directory, you do CMake from from the build directory, but with the contents of the directory below that. So that would be the two full stops, then make, and then sudo make install again. When you type in sudo, it'll ask for your your password, unless you're on a Raspberry Pi, in which case it won't. It doesn't tend to do that. So there should be some installation instructions for IT++ as well on here. Now that's slightly different, because you would use the wget command if you were to download it from the command line. wget basically downloads web pages and, and things. So, and then you've got to decompress the the um, uh, compressed file that it downloads. Then you'd go into the directory. The asterisk indicates the directory name. And then you make a build directory, and then enter the build directory. Same process again. See, so make everything below the build directory. The two dots. The make command is slightly different. It's make minus j nproc, that's actually um, uh, in inverted inverted commas I believe it's hard to tell, but I believe that's what it is I do have that written down somewhere and then it's sudo make install again it may ask you for a password, but it may not depending on your, how your system's configured uh, like I say, I don't know if any of this actually works on the Raspberry Pi because I've not actually tried that but I will try that eventually and then what should happen is you should then have it working now on my system I will close off the web browser window because we don't need that right now. So I'll close off this terminal window because we don't need that right now. That's just the screen recorder that's recording this, so we'll ignore that. That's just my notes. We don't need those right now. So I'll not save those changes. And I'll open a fresh terminal window if I can get it to work. So this is everything that's installed on my system, but we don't want that. What we actually want is the terminal. So I'll use LX terminal, which is what I was demonstrating it in the other day. So I've just got to find the command now. So this is the command that that you would use to run it. As you can see, so it uses the standard out, and then you have to put PADSP ahead of the actual DSD executable's name. Uh, an input, which is minus I, you put a you put a dash in there, and it's the standard input, and it will come out with the default sound card. So that's what it will do. So you should get something like that. If you get any errors, then there's obviously something else wrong. I can't really offer any support on this because I not really played about with it too much and in order to receive a signal what we need to do is if this will work is if you've got it installed you'd need um, an SDR software like GQRX um, which might take a while because I'm obviously running this uh, recording at the moment so I've got GQRX that's on my jumbo spots frequency there's a button at the bottom labeled UDP press that and then start up your SDR. And it should decode something. I'm not sure what it's doing at the moment because I can't hear anything. Yeah. So it is decoding. But unfortunately it's picking up feedback from my microphone as well, which isn't ideal. So you should... I'll go back to the terminal. Get a screen that looks something like that when it's decoding. 
So at the moment it's not it's just stopped decoding the last transmission and now it's started decoding something else. There's a lot of errors there but I think that's got something to do with me um, uh, either running this screen capture or it that's just um, uh, how it came out. So there we go. So you should get something like that. So I'm going to end that there. So it says total audio error is 1344 it's to be expected and then I can turn this off. So, what I'll do now is show you how to set up um, GQRX to actually send that out. So, just restart GQRX. It might take a while. There we go. So, just I'm not obviously going to start that. I've got the gain set to 22.4 decibels. Uh, just got to adjust that until you can get a decent signal. So, if we go into audio settings you've got three tabs in there FFT you don't need to touch anything on there recording that's just uh, where the recorded files will go if you press the record button and network this is the important one now this can either say local host or 127 decimal 0 decimal 0 decimal 1 now I found just typing in local host in there didn't work so that's why I changed it to, to what it is is there Port 7355, you don't need to change that. There's no OK or Cancel button on this. Just press the Close button, then press UDP, and then that will now stream it to the other software. And hopefully that's explained it. I'm not sure how well I've explained it, so I'm not brilliant at explaining things. However... <laughs> It, is, it does take some getting used to. So that should hopefully cover everything. So let's let's see what happens from from there. So if I go back into it, hopefully everything should still work. So let's wait for it to load again. There we go. I press start DSP. That's giving me my waterfall. I push uh, the UDP button. And then I go back into activities here. I go into my list of applications. I then go into the terminal window. I'll use LX terminal again. And then I run the same command as before. There we go, but it's coming with a lot of errors because it's actually picked it up midstream, which is not ideal. So it's actually still getting the, the data through. It's just been because I've tried picking it up midstream, it's come out with errors. I've noticed it does that a lot. So that seems to be it. So, so it is working. It's just picked it because I picked it up midstream like that. That's why it's coming out with errors. So I'm not going to keep that up and and bore you with it and yeah so that's basically how it works if you don't have GQRX installed then you could just install that from the package manager it will probably install other things like GNU radio so right right back to the camera I suppose okay so that's how I managed to get uh, DSD working on my desktop computer decoding uh, DMR using my Nuelec NESDR Smart and uh, GQRX. So it's decoding at the moment from the hub nets from my jumbo spot. So let's turn it up and see if we can hear it. Let's turn it down a bit. So I'm not sure if that was picked up by this microphone or not because of the way it is. So we've got GQRX, uh, DSD, it's all running, it's all working, so it may seem simple, but I'm pretty sure this will go over the heads of a few people who aren't that buffet with uh, Linux, um, although it may be something that might be familiar to you if you've used the Raspberry Pi. So I, I was using Linux long before the Raspberry Pi was even thought of, uh, so I do know my way around it somewhat. So. It's um, it's a bit of a learning curve sometimes, but it can be done. And uh, I've 
put up the best instructions I I can do. Um, I probably could do better, but uh, it's probably something for another day. Because, uh, uh, like I said, I couldn't get it to work with DSD Plus on on the um, uh, Windows 10 tablet for whatever reason. So, because it would only decode for about 20 seconds, so <laughs> I gave up and just went, went over here and, it, and it's worked fine. So, that's brilliant. So... This is Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730, if you catch me on 11 metres and PMR 446. Uh, so, <laughs> I am on on the air most of the time. Uh, I'm trying to get back on the air now, um, as much as I can. I uh, do monitor GB3IR. I'm not monitoring it at the moment at the time of filming, as I've got no radios on right now. Uh, GB3HG is another one I tend to monitor. Uh uh, I'd like I said, I also monitor the hub net, although I don't have the radio on at the moment. It's just being decoded on my computer here. Um, uh, network radios, I haven't been on there in a while, but I do sometimes monitor that from time to time as well. So, And um, when I'm in the car, I'm monitoring the, the channel 19 on CB, although it's the usual uh, burner brigade are on there. So. <laughs> so that's all I tend to hear on there at the moment, which is a bit of a shame. So... Seven threes for now, guys. Uh, keep yourself safe out there, and I'll hopefully be back with another one very soon. Seven threes for now, guys. <laughs>